What is up everybody, welcome back to World of Tanks. How is it going? I am back with yet another tank review episode and today I have something exclusive for you. SDRV S1, which is our newest tier 8 premium tank in this game. I know that Wargaming is dishing out premium tanks like, like no tomorrow, but this one is actually a little bit different than all the rest of the tanks that we have seen in the last year or something like that, because this tank is our first siege mode premium tank in this game. And it is already breaking one record. It has the highest average penetration among all the rest of the premium tanks, even including tier 10s. Some special tier 10 tanks like, like Land Wars uh, War Tanks. 288 mm of penetration on tier 8 premium DD. Do you like to be sneaky? Do you like to be super sneaky? Do you like to deal a lot of damage without getting spotted? Do you like siege mode? If you do, this tank is for you. This tank is perfect for you. If you hate siege mode, if you hate Swedish DDs, you can close the video already. This tank is not for you. Or actually, you cannot close this video because I'm going to show you what is good about this tank, what is bad about this tank, how to play it, how to play against it, and all that hopefully is going to be in this video. And I'm also going to show you one really awesome ace tanker battle played live, so stay tuned for that. And uh, of course you have to know what, what you are fighting with. So yeah, closing the video idea from me was kind of stupid, so sorry for that. Uh, you still have to know how to play against it. Uh, but uh, once again, this tank is perfect for you and I recommend this tank to you if you like siege modes, siege mode tanks already. But let's get into it. And I am actually going to compare this tank to the Udes Stero 3, which is standard tier 8 Swedish TD in this game. And I believe there is no reason to compare this tank to any other tank or any other premium tank in this game. Because gameplay or playstyle is simply that different. Siege mode tanks are siege mode tanks and you have to play them differently than any other uh, TDs in this game. Uh, so, let's get going and uh, let's start with uh, firepower, because this tank is a tank destroyer, so firepower is one of the most important things about this premium tank. Now, it actually has a lot better average damage per minute than on uh, standard tier 8 Swedish TD Udes 03. Udes 03 has 2086, and by the way, all those uh, stats that I'm going to tell you at the moment are with 100% crew, without any equipment, crew skills or consumables. And after that, I am going to tell you uh, what you are able to get out from this tank, how good your DPM is going to be and so on. Uh, but at first, standard 100% crew member uh, specs. And uh, let's start with average damage per minute. Over here you can see that S1 has over 300 better DPM, but actually when Ude 03 hits uh, the siege mode, DPMs are going to be almost exactly the same. Because reload time on Ude 03 is going down while he is in the siege mode, but on S1 it is what it is over here. So quickly, let's go over gun stats and gun handling stats while those two tanks are in the siege mode. Uh, as I said, DPM them is almost the same. That means reload time is going to be almost the same as well. On S1, 10.20 seconds. On Ude 03, 10.3 seconds. Uh, aiming time, 1.4 seconds versus 1.5 seconds. Next up, we have accuracy, aka dispersion. Now, as this sees, Swedish TD with the siege mode. It has exceptional accuracy. 0.30 is really, really good, but not as good as one of the best accuracies in the game on Ude does 03, which is 0 0.25, uh, but once again 0 0.30 is still really really good. And uh, one of the special things about S1 is shell velocity, 1450 meters per second, which is just mind-blowingly awesome. And shell velocity, you really do not need to lead your targets uh, a lot. Gun depression minus 11 degrees, gun elevation 11 degrees. On Ude 03 you have minus 14 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of gun elevation. And uh, this is actually their biggest model difference as well. On SDRV S1 your gun is stuck to your tank, to your hull. You cannot move your gun up and down. 
for Nudas Zero Free, you have that special ability compared to the all the rest of the siege mode tanks at the moment in the game that you can actually move your gun up and down as well. You cannot move your gun left or right, to left or right, but you can move it up and down. All the rest of the siege mode tanks, uh, tier 9 one, uh, tier 10 one and this one over here, gun is stuck to the hull. And this uh, limits your gun handling a little bit as well. So minus 11 degrees of gun depression uh, versus minus 14 degrees of gun depression. As survivability, nothing to talk about over here. 1000 hit points, which is a really low amount of hit points. You have actually lower amount of hit points than on RHM Borshik. Uh, for example, uh, 30, 30 and 30 millimeters thick armor, which is actually 10 millimeters thicker armor than on Udus Zero Freeze. So you can actually bounce some stuff. You can actually bounce, believe me. Uh, you are going to see some bounces from me as well. Hopefully, I don't know if I remember to add some clips uh, from tier 8 guns and I think I have bounced a few tier 9 guns as well uh, But uh, well, yeah, the rule of thumb is uh, do not count on your armor Whenever you are going to be spotted, you are going to be penetrated But if you are going to play with your hull, play with your gun, move it up and down So your hull is going to get even more slope Then it is harder to hit you in the first place and penetrate you But almost every single Russian gun is uh, going to overmatch your armor anyways Now mobility is where this tank does not shine uh, Usually on Swedish TDs, uh, they are pretty fast uh, moving forward and backward, but this thing is uh, super heavy. I really do not understand where all that weight comes from. Yes, you have 10 millimeters thicker armor than on Uda Zero Free, but it really doesn't make any sense. Uda Zero Free's uh, weight is, uh, let's say, 21 uh, tons. 20.86 uh, tons, but uh, STRVS 1's weight is 33 tons. You have 10 HP weaker engine, 540 horsepower engine compared to the 550 on Uda Zero 3. And thanks to that, thanks to the weak engine and fairly heavy tank, actually, a 33 ton heavy tank with 540 horsepower engine, your specific power is complete and utter garbage. 16.36 horsepower per ton compared to the Udas's uh, 26.37 over 10 horsepower per ton uh, difference complete garbage and your soft stats like terrain resistances on hard medium and soft terrain are also uh, worse than on Udas Zero Free not by much but still worse Top speed 50, uh, reverse speed 45, reverse speed 45 is actually kind of good, uh, but your top speed 50, it is actually hard to achieve it uh, with all those numbers over here. Traverse speed 27.12 compared to the 29.2, so it is not too bad. Uh, switching to siege mode 2 seconds, uh, switching to travel mode 1.25 seconds. Uh, switching to travel mode is actually something special, uh, 1.25 seconds. Uda Zero 3 has uh, 2 seconds, kind of special. And now concealment is actually where this tank shines, however. Mobility super bad, concealment super good. Now Uda Zero 3 has one of the best concealments in the game and has uh, the best concealment in high tiers starting from tier 8 and uh, this tank is not far behind on Uda Zero Free your standard concealment uh, factor or percentage is uh, 26.11 while you are stationary and on STRV S1 you have 24.05 camo factor which is just super super good and I am actually going to show you one clip on the background right now take a look at this guys just crazy look how close this guy is almost under 100 meters and he's not spotting me and when i took the shot i thought this guy was aiming at me and i thought that i finally did get spotted but i actually didn't get spotted before i took that shot but i was afraid that this guy started aiming at me but he was simply pointing his gun towards me in my direction a little panic moment over there but still 
bloody bloody amazing uh, camo factor on this tank. Uh, finally, view range uh, 350 meters, uh, which uh, you have to boost actually with binoculars or go to the optics, but I recommend binoculars because you are going to stay in the siege mode anyways, almost always. And uh, view range, uh, stock view range or base view range 350 meters is uh, the same as on Ultus Zero 3. So, now you know what is good about this tank, what is bad about this tank and how it stands uh, compared to the standard GRH Swedish Siege Mode DD. And uh, by the way, sorry, I didn't mention it before, but average damage with one shot is 390 damage. Average penetration, as I mentioned before, is the highest out of all the rest of the premium tanks and the special premium tanks in this game, 288. But anyways guys, now let's take a look at this tank with my crew, with my crew skills, with my equipment, which is a medium caliber tank on rammer, pinos and camonet. I am not using ventilation and I am not using food. I am, uh, I am using exterior uh, camos, by the way, which gives me plus 4%. And my tank stats are as followed. 6.97 rate of fire, 8.61 second reload time. I was able to get it down to 8.61 seconds from 9.77 seconds. If I remember correctly, gun traverse speed 30.76. Uh, gun depression and elevation are the same. Aiming time 2.87 seconds. This is standard aiming time without siege mode, as we know. Uh, once again, while you are in the siege mode, your aiming time is a lot better. And as I am not using uh, either food or ventilation, my dispersion is not going to be improved uh, that much. 0 0.38, still kind of meh, but what can you do? and uh, 2719 average damage per minute, which is getting boosted by medium caliber tank on rammer, of course, and brothers in arms. Survivability obviously is the same, or actually not, because your DPM is better, you're able to kill your targets faster, and they are not able to shoot back at you. <laughs> so your survivability is actually a little bit better that way, but will uh, jokes aside uh, bad joke by the way uh, mobility actually improved because uh, tank traverse speed 30.76 i am boosting my uh, traverse speed with brothers in arms off-road driving and clutch braking and i believe this tank needs it badly it needs it uh, really badly so i recommend using those skills on your driver simply because 30.76 uh, traverse speed after boosting it is still kinda, hmm, you know, okay, and light tanks uh, are able to circle you to death, but uh, this saves you from getting circled by some medium tanks at least. And now concealment, after boosting it with exterior skills, uh, cosmetical skills, that gives you plus 4%, and after fully training camo on every single crew member, and after camo net, your stationary concealment factor is 63.38% which is just amazing and as you saw from the clip it is actually working as intended guys something is working as intended in a world of tanks it is, it is amazing thanks to your pinos thanks to your camonet your epic concealment you are able to stay in the bushes spot for your team and uh, get your experience uh, that way and uh, finally spotting after brothers in arms recon situational awareness and binos i was able to get my view range from shitty 350 meters to 472 meters so you are actually going to be one pretty nice scout for your team if you are going to be in uh, some kind of aggressive position or if you have to spot uh, when you are defending the base and enemy tanks are coming towards you. Uh, so yes, uh, this is SDRVS1 on paper uh, compared to the standard tier 8 TD and after boosting it uh, with uh, some of my equipment pieces. And actually, let's see, uh, let's add food just for lols. Let's see how good this gets. Uh, camo is actually going to be better as well, so your camo from 63. 0.38 to 65.31 yep uh, coffee and cinnamon buns is going to give you plus 1.93 percent camo 
uh, Traverse is going to be boosted by 1.69. So yeah, maybe actually, maybe actually I can recommend using food as well, but just to test it out, I didn't want to do it. And your DPM is going to be boosted by 120. Thanks to that. And accuracy as well by 0 0.01. So yeah, and almost 500 meters view range. My god. Bloody, bloody amazing. But yeah, actually, just for the episode, let's play it. As I most likely am going to play it. We'll see. Anyways, now I am going to play one live battle as well. So see you on the battlefield. Huh, okay. Hello, Overlord, once again. Now I'm thinking that enemy team has... Oh, and hello, Uda03. But I'm thinking that uh, enemy team has... Oh, ho. I think. Are you trying to get up here? I can help you. I can boost you. But I think that uh, this oh oh might be over here or here let's see Uda 0 3 and s1 together beautiful and yes oh why oh ni oh ho they are all coming into the middle perfect perfect positioning yes let's wait let's wait and see ARL and artillery is blind firing. As kinda expected. This is really, really standard position. Goodbye. That was a little bit each aim, but still. Haha, <laughs> 375. Perfect teamwork. Okay, ARL. My DPM is a little bit better. Yeah, I did hit the ground. Most likely you are going to see the RNG value of this gun as well. Ooh. Oh ho. Perfect positioning. I killed someone inside the tank. Ooh, the zero three. We have to we have to protect our defender. Please guys, kill it, kill it fast. And do you know what? I'm actually playing with one hand. I'm simply Holding my left and next to my face. This is how easy it is to play siege mode tanks. Come on, one more shit need. I think I should be able to get it. Let's put it. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me, guys? Did you see that shot? Complete BS. AMX. Over there. Maybe. Actually, over there. God damn, behind that bunker for me. I think. Yeah. But where the hell did Super Brushing go? And oh, why? And oh, me. Where the hell did you go, guys? Back? Already? Okay, fuck it. Let's go. Let's try to spot them. Or something at least. Yeah, Oni went back. Super brushing is still missing. However. ARL is over there. Now let's just keep going. We are winning 74. So. Everything is still under control. Ooh, the zero three. Did not move. That position really provided at the moment. Like nothing too crazy, just... And as soon as I'm able to see that ARL, I am going to switch into siege mode. Come on. Beautiful. Back to the travel mode. And uh, it, it feels really good, the travel mode, it goes into the travel mode with uh, 1.25 seconds. It really gives this tank a lot. After you get spotted, you are a lot faster out of the action. Come on, Ferdinand. Can I see you through the bunker or not? Oh, that snipe though. 
and I'm Bouncing Panther too. As I told you, you are going to see some bounces with that paper armor. 3007 damage done. I can't see shit, but okay, you juked me. Yeah, it is hard when you can't see shit. Am I able to see this guy? Oh, yes, I am. Nope, I'm, I'm not. I don't know why it didn't register. Okay, commander is dead. On that super brushing. We have a lot of artilleries. To risk it. Yeah, fuck it. Eh, did hit the ground. I'm able to see the entire south side of the map, so I guess I'm going to park myself over here. And let's wait. Panther 2 is somewhere over there as well. I take one blind shot. My come on it is active. That was not a hit, because Panther 2 has to be somewhere over there. Taking blind shots at the moment. Okay, okay, guys, I get a little bit closer. So my spotting ring is going to be covered. Like you can see over there. But most likely they are not going to be aggressive or they are not going to be. Let's wait and see, though. I don't understand what what those guys are doing. Really. Do I really have to go in? Why nobody's playing? Okay, let's, let's see. Wow. Okay. Oh yeah, outspotted. Goodbye. <laughs> oh my god. Now? Can you go in now? This game so far has been pretty sexy. For tier 8 battle, I mean. Like, it is, it is not that easy to get that much damage done in uh, tier 8 games. Holy shit, did I get... I didn't get a single point of assistance and RT... Which RT was it? AC-14 to pretty much one shot at the guy. And I did not get anything. GG. Who the fuck spotted him? Maybe Hellcat. Yeah, I believe it was Hellcat, not me. But anyways, four kills. Not too bad, let's see. Oh, Ace Tanker as well. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Ace Tanker, high caliber, confederate. I have one top gun as well. And actually one of my blind shots was a hit. Which one? Which one was a hit? I don't remember. Who cares? Close to 4000 damage done, 1100 experience. And, hmm, ammunition cost. It's actually quite high, or your credit income is really, really low. If if I'm going to think about it, with every other tier 8 premium tank, when you deal 4000 damage, it is almost guaranteed 100,000 credit profit, even with repairs. I didn't have to repair my vehicle. I left the battle with full HP. Interesting, really, really interesting. But, uh, ladies and gents, I believe I am done. This was SDRV S1, Tier 8 Swedish Premium Tank Destroyer. You know what is good about this tank, what is bad about this tank, how it plays, and so on. Uh, but uh, what do I think about this tank and do I recommend it? Now, it is actually hard to tell, guys. Because it depends if you like Siege Mode or not.
if you like siege mode then this tank is for you. This tank is perfect for you. It has really good gun, high penetration, high alpha damage uh, for premium tank. 288 millimeters of penetration is just God's gift, in my opinion. God's gift. And uh, 390 alpha damage is perfect. So, really awesome concealment. One of the best concealments in the game. Go for it. If you like siege mode tanks, go for it. Gold price, gold value at the moment is 10,900. So for that kind of price, yeah, I recommend it. But if you do not like siege mode tanks, if you do not like siege mode playstyle, please stay away from it. And if you do not know if you like siege mode tanks or not, I recommend you grind out tier 8 at least. Tier 8 uh, Swedish siege mode DD, Udes 03. And after that, make up your mind if you like uh, that, uh, that kind of playstyle or not. But I really do not recommend uh, testing it out with this tank, whether you like uh, Siege Mode or not. Uh, it is going to be fairly expensive test if you do not like it. So, uh, before you are going to buy this tank, I really do recommend uh, trying out uh, any other Swedish Siege Mode tanks on a Sandbox server or maybe on public test server before you are going to make the purchase. Uh, so yes, it has a really good gun actually for a tier 8 premium tank. It has a really exceptional concealment. It has a really good uh, view range if you are going to equip your uh, crew members and your tank accordingly. Uh, it has fairly poor mobility and survivability. So yes, this is SDRVS1. I hope you enjoyed, I hope this episode was informative, if you did enjoy or if you, if you found it being helpful, consider leaving me a little thumbs up button, click down, lick this episode, you know, this helps me, and uh, I get you next time, take care and bye.